Scholing made the trip to Larkall in midweek, looking to carry on their winning ways. The reverse game ended 0-0, and Scholing will be looking to avoid a slip-up in what is Ryan Gosney's 300th appearance for the Boatman. Here are the thoughts from both managers ahead of the game. Obviously, second match against Larkall this season. Uh, the first leg, if you like, was 0-0. Um, are you expecting a little bit more from your players today? Well, I missed that one, actually, the first time round. But um, <clears throat> no, they're a big, strong team. Um, you know, uh, I don't think they've been beaten up here this year so far. So, obviously, we know we've got a game on our hands. We've still got seven players out, which is you know, seven players to add to this group of players. Um, the situation when we come here and it's it's on a Wednesday night, it's uh, it's a tough place to come to, you know, especially with the year as well. I mean, the, the logistics of the place is, is tough. Um, it's the first time I've ever been here, to be honest with you. But um, no, they're, they're a decent side, you know, they're uh, going to give us a run for our money, obviously. But I said to the lads, you know, Limiting drew down here three all, so uh, you know, there is there is sort of like room for sort of like for us to sort of like get on top early if, if possible and uh, maybe sustain that, you know, because. Um, you know, obviously it's important now we've got uh, Mangus on Saturday, so it's important to get a little bit of a run. But to be honest with you, I'll take a point right now. Uh, the first game was a nil-nil draw. Do you think your players have got enough in the tank now to beat Sholing? I'm sure we can beat them, but I'm sure they think they can beat us as well. You know, and that's the thing. And um, uh, I, I'm, It's quite odd, really, playing them so early again. We haven't played Melchum. The we haven't played about four or five clubs at the top yet, you know, so it's quite odd to be playing, you know, the second game against these and they really don't want to come up here on a Tuesday night. And like we didn't want to come down to your place, like you know, the, the fixtures are all rubbish. The following Saturday we played Mangersfield last time. Well they could have just swapped those around, you know, and it is what it is. But going back to your question, we have got enough, but um, whether we'll do that, we're not playing great at the moment, I must admit. We're not, you know, but we're staying in games, we had a good win in the cup on Saturday. Um, and yeah, we had a good win at Poulton the other week, but we're not really at our straps again, you know, for a little bit now. So I don't know, is the word, you know, I, I haven't got a clue. Let's see what happens tonight. <laughs> Sholing get this one underway, kicking from left to right under the lights. This long goal kick was cleverly flicked on and into the path of Dan Mason who beat his man before unleashing his shot into the arms of Simmons. Larkhall had a chance not long after, when Lewis Powell hit this one first time, only to see the ball sail over the goal. The home side had a chance to test goals, but Lewis Powell's attempt was never troubling him. From the resulting goal kick, Gosney found the head of Dan Mason, who nodded on for target to get in behind and finished nicely to open the scoring for the boatman. Another free kick for Larkall, this time hit by Dale Evans, but again sailing over the crossbar. Ryan Cluett's pinpoint ball was chested down by Dan Mason, who beat the defender before lashing wide. Has to be hitting the target from there and he knows it. A third free kick for the home side and this time Samuel Crumb blasted it over, much to the amusement of the Sholing supporters. Early in the second half, Dan Mason was able to chest down this long pass from Goz before Ryan Cloet's dangerous ball into the box was deflected just wide by Joseph Hillard. Another long ball from Goz evaded everyone but Thomas Grzewski, but his lobbed effort was just wide. After Brad Target was adjudged to have committed a foul, Larkle were the victims of their own mistakes, as the free kick only went as far as Dan Mason, who released McCluffy to flick on for Target, who then forced Simmons into a good save.
From the resulting corner, Roundell kept the ball alive before finding Target, who lashed in his second goal of the evening to make the score 2-0. Some swift attacking play by Scholing eventually saw Dan Mason crossing into Thomas and the ball deflecting to the path of Target who forced Simmons into another fine save. A clever flick from Dan Mason allowed Brad Target to generate space for a shot but was again denied a hat-trick by Simmons who got down well to prevent a third. Brad Target was seemingly unstoppable on Wednesday night as he shrugged off a defender before gliding past the next and seeing his cross cleared away for a corner. The winger then blocked a clearance and released McCluthy, who had the ball flipped away from him and into the path of Dan Mason, who tested Simmons for the umpteenth time during the 90. Ryan Cloet's ball into the box was rifled into the back of the net by Dan Mason, only for the referee to pull play back for a foul in the build-up. Another pinpoint ball by Gosney eventually fell to Dan Mason, who was dragged down by Josh Jones before the referee pointed to the penalty spot. Dan stepped up and set the keeper the wrong way to make it 3-0 to the boatman. Yet another free kick for Larkall and instead of blasting over they could only connect with the wall as they waste another good chance. Full time and a great 3-0 win for Scholing. Larkall manager Phil Bater declined to comment, so here are the thoughts from Dave Diper. But first, Ryan Gosney after his 300th appearance for Scholing. 300th appearance for Scholing. It must be all that sweeter with a clean sheet and three points. I love a clean sheet. It's, it's really nice to have a clean sheet, so the boys did excellent today. But, you know, can't fault the defence. Solid all weights. What does it mean to you to make 300 appearances in a Scholing shirt? To be fair, at the start, I never thought I'd play for Shodan, so D and Bayer all joke about it, but no, nah, it's a great lad, so really proud to get there for Andrew Clarences. 3 0 win away from home, you must be over the moon with that performance from your team. Yeah, super. Um, <clears throat> it's always uh, you know, going to be difficult to come down here tonight. Um, it was really important to get through the first 20 minutes, which we did. Uh, we just grew into the game, I thought it lasted tremendously well. Everybody put a shift in tonight, and um, it just goes to show if everybody puts that 9 out of 10 of effort in, this is what you get out of the game and um, we took our goals well and scored at the right times as well so uh, yeah very pleased with uh, today's performance. And um, Ryan Gosling, 300 appearances for Scholding, how much of uh, an important player is he to your team? Oh he's you know he's he's tremendous goalkeeper, um, you know we're very lucky to have him, uh, could be playing higher I think um, but he loves it here you know. Um, 300 appearances, that's some feat for a goalkeeper really, uh, and yeah, he's, he's part of that, I mean, you know, donuts as he calls them, clean sheets, is, you know, we've only conceded nine goals in the league, and uh, to be honest with you, I mean, that says it all, you know, 